we were talking about um, food rights and that food rights are based on 70% of the Atlantic average of a national nutritious food basket. So if a parent has only 70% of the money they need for their family for food, they have to choose whether they're going to eat or their kids are going to eat. Mr. Premier, how can you wait one day longer while we know that individuals on social assistance have no other option than to go hungry or watch their children go hungry? The Honourable Premier. Well, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. It, it is uh, a very important question, but it's an important issue, and, and uh, it's, uh, I don't know what the simple answer uh, is. Uh, I, I think that uh, uh, the other part of the equation is uh, because we force people on social assistance with they have less money, uh, they make poor choices, which impacts their health later on, Mr. Speaker, which I think the Honourable Member from Charlottetown West Raleigh was indicating in his questions about wellness that I do think it has to come to a, uh, we have to transform how we do this. If we're going to be serious about uh, uh, helping those who need help, those most vulnerable, we have to continue to explore things like a basic income guarantee, Mr. Speaker. It doesn't only give people some financial independence, but it gives them some dignity and it allows them to raise their children in a responsible way, which they all want to do, Mr. Speaker. So uh, I don't know what the answer is, uh, but I, I hope we can work together to find it, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown Belvedere and the Oppos Opposition House Leader. I thank the Premier for that thoughtful answer and I continue to look forward to us working on that long-term solution. But in the interim, um, we still have the challenge of the more month than money. Perhaps individuals could dip into the money that social assistance provides them for personal items. Personal items include hygienic supplies like soap, menstrual pads, toothpaste, shampoo. Each month, a person on social assistance gets $24.00 to cover these expenses. A question to the Minister of Finance and, and the Minister responsible for the status of women. Can you provide the House with a breakdown of how perhaps a person could budget for their hygienic needs with $24 a month? The Honourable Minister of Finance and Deputy Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you very much for the question. I think we all realize that it's impossible to, to budget with that amount of money. <clears throat> we as a government want to ensure that every Islander lives with dignity and has the means to do that. And as, as the Premier mentioned, uh, one way to do that, do that would be through a, a guaranteed uh, income. So we're, we're, we're exploring that with our federal counterparts and we'll continue to do that. And I want to assure the member across that we are concerned with everyday Islanders and their needs, and especially those that are vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown, Belvedere, and the Opposition House Leader. This is not only a question of food and personal items. The total amount of money that's provided by social assistance is considered inadequate by national standards. The market-based measure of poverty says that a single person in PEI needs just under $20,000 a year to make ends meet, while a family with two children needs at least $40,000. A single person on social assistance receives half of that, and a family with two children receives only about 75%. A question for the Minister of Social Assistance and Housing. Why do you feel that individuals, families and children on social assistance only deserve a portion of their basic needs? The Honourable Minister of Social Development and Housing. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And I think uh, all of us from uh, uh, the Premier's comments, from uh, the Minister of uh, Finance's comments, uh, you know, we, uh, and as I've said before, we do need to do more. I look at uh, some of the things so that our department that my department is looking at and I'll just go through some of them here uh, develop and implement a new transitional social assistance by better supporting those who can attach to employment uh, developing and we have had the discussions before uh, uh, with the honorable member uh, with regard to uh, the secure income pilot program uh, it's great to be working with a member and other ones here in the House with regard to a basic income guarantee. Uh, the last I'll mention is just uh, the Seniors Independence Program and uh, Inclusions Program for Children that we have to do as much as we can. Can we do more? Yes, we have to look at that. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown, Belvedere, and the Opposition House Leader. I would agree with the Minister that we are doing good foundational work in committee on um, addressing poverty through the work on the basic income guarantee, but that is work that leads into the future, and this is a situation that is right now. We have been talking about this for many years, and even within the, in the last election period discussed substantive increases required to bring social assistance up to just the bare minimum required 
There are 4,500 people on social assistance. What will your department do to commit to increasing social assistance amounts to at least meet the minimum national standard? The Honourable Minister of Social Development and Housing. Well, thank you very much again, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, you know, you look at, uh, at the collaboration that we have had across departments, uh, across uh, government, with the opposition, with the third party, and with our uh, community partners. I think that uh, it's, uh, it's not just one department. It's um, a multifaceted approach, if you like. Uh, certainly we realize that there are individuals who are in social assistance that do have uh, other requirements, whether they be under the health care system, uh, is just an example. Housing uh, had uh, great announcements from, uh, from my counterpart, uh, the Minister of uh, Economic Development and Tourism. But what it comes down to, to me, Mr. Speaker, is working together but we do have the same goal in mind. Are we there yet? No, we're not. But we work together to get there. Thank you. The Honourable Member from Charlottetown, Belvedere, the Opposition House Leader, your final question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I mentioned earlier, women face unique challenges in poverty. Periods are expensive. Pregnancies are expensive. Preventing pregnancy is expensive. So let's begin with periods. I've heard from young women living in poverty that they can't always afford menstrual pads or tampons. <coughs> They resort to using other not as effective or hygienic means like fast food napkins and will skip school or work during their period. A, minister, a, sorry, a question to the minister responsible for the status of women. How will you ensure that no women in PEI go without menstrual pads on PEI because they can't afford them? The Honourable Minister of Finance and Deputy Premier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And again, thank you for the question. Uh, it's not acceptable that, that women have to uh, use fast food napkins or anything else to meet their needs during their period. I will work with my counterparts, with the NGOs that are involved, to try and help uh, mitigate the problem. We have to maybe look at the cost of what that would be and uh, incorporate it into our budget, but I think it's, it's very important that we do address the, the need.